Well, wouldn't you know it, but I am technically overweight. I had a comment recently on one of our shorts about separating muscle mass from BMI. I think it's a really important topic. So let's get into it. So obviously there'll be confounding factors here. If you have other reasons for carrying that extra weight besides body fat, it's going to look like you have higher fat mass than you actually do. Skew that BMI up. And this is exactly why I hate that it is a hallmark of all of our notes here in the medical records. Realistically, I'm walking around about 200 pounds, six foot. And if you look at the little chart there, that tells you that it's a BMI of about 27 in the overweight category. In reality, one of the more important metrics that can help separate the two is any waist circumference. So if you compare that BMI and waist circumference, that will give you a better interpretation of actual health and body fat overall. We just put a short out about visceral fat. This is exactly where that is relevant. If somebody has a high BMI, but a small waist circumference, mine's about 31 inches, that tells you there's low body fat and low visceral fat in particular. That's when you can really get this context of, is that weight related with poor health? Because visceral fat is one of the more direct negative effects of carrying extra body weight. And if you have low visceral fat, then your weight is likely not quite as pathologic or pathologic at all for the high BMI. Other things that may drive the BMI up that aren't muscle mass or body fat, if for some reason you're retaining fluid, that will not necessarily be a good health reason for higher BMI, but it's not fat mass. So it's important to factor that in too. Best example here where it's not really that big of a deal, if you are recently post-op, from the procedure here and you got fluids during the procedure, there's a lot of fluid shifts after that surgery. So it's going to be going from inside your blood vessels into the tissues, and ultimately it's got to go back into the blood vessels so you can urinate it out. If you have swelling in your legs, that's a pretty good sign that this might be the factor here. And you're going to see this be a little more stubborn after joint replacements in the lower body. I see this all the time after knee replacements. Because you're moving around all the vessels around the knee there, any fluid downstream in the calf or foot is going to have more trouble getting back up north. Also, if you're moving around less, that fluid's going to stick around there too. So it's kind of two reasons why after a surgery, you might have more fluid, which will drive your weight up and make your BMI higher temporarily. This is a little more of an exotic, pun intended, reason for this one. But if you have something like implants put in, whether it be wherever, that's extra mass, that is not going to be body fat. So again, that would skew BMI as well. Now for women, this can get really complicated just because weight distribution really matters here. So if you have a high bust size, wide hips, and store weight in the hips and thighs, and a very small waist size, you may have a high BMI that does not correlate with poor health. On the flip side, there's the whole skinny fat thing. Someone who's got a normal-ish BMI, but all the hallmarks of metabolic disease, and that's somebody who is going to be more apple shaped, carrying the weight around the midsection. Overall, BMI is better than nothing, especially if the person is not overall athletically built. It usually has a pretty good correlation with health or poor health. However, that is most important and most useful when you take into context one other data point.